Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2. In this episode we have a new system to try out and we are trying to deliver resources as uh, supplies to the moon. Actually hmm, it's really hard to get to the non-resource tank that I wanted. Uh, I, I added a tank of fertilizer to this because fertilizer is what we need to convert the mulch at the base to supplies so we don't have to keep sending supplies. Um, need to put this solar panel in the middle of two tanks would be best. Uh, so here we've got a tank of fertilizer but then we've got three tanks of supplies as well. I don't know how much fertil fertilizer we really need but the idea of this is well first of all obviously to take advantage of this particular fairing but this portion is a recoverable stage obviously with a single skipper and three thud engines and it's three thuds because we've got six lander legs and we also have parachutes enough to set it down safely 5.8 meters per second and then we have the egg portion of this and the egg is just a sort of dummy stage in other words it doesn't have a controller on it and right now it's actually oriented wrong because it'll blast those things well it won't really blast those things because it's meant to have these extendable pods the reason it has extendable pods is because it has to fit inside the fairing, the interesting petal fairing. So it has these, so it can extend out, but this is not the best orientation for it. Obviously the best orientation is for it to be uh, turned 90 degrees, so we'll do that. But the egg is meant to be cheap and easily dumped, so we don't have to uh, worry about the cost of it too much, but we'll take a look at the cost in a sec. Um, the engines are these Ma'at radial liquid fuel engines. They provide 80 kilonewtons, 320 ISP. They cost 900 apiece. But uh, yeah, 51,750 without it. And then we'll turn it like that. So it's about 4,000 is what we've got there. And that's the disposable portion of it. But yeah, so it's got the extendable things. And that's what it looks like. So it's a nifty little package and we're going to recover this. We'll let stage recovery handle it but and we'll actually pull up those lander legs and add add launch clamps. So obviously as uh, you should know by now uh, having watched some of these videos at least that I can never really do the same thing twice. <laughs> uh, I, I always come up with something new and once again we come up with something new to resupply the moon so that's what we're doing here and then we have to this was actually built uh, to deliver the lander that's going to send two scientists and an engineer to Minmus that's actually what I designed the system for the lander is going to go in here but I decided to have this oh I've got the most important thing about uh, this uh, system of course we've got Nerva engines here but they're scaled down, they're tweaked scaled down to 0.625 meters because the normal Nerva engine would be too big. So we've got two scaled down Nerva engines and the only fuel we have on here we've got liquid fuel pod, liquid fuel pod and so that's the only liquid fuel here. Oh I forgot something uh, we need some mod propellant well maybe we should do it without mod propellant we'll just rely on other things to dock with it and I'll take off the RCS port so it'll be simpler that way. So we, uh, I mean, I don't know how cheaty it is to uh, scale down the nerve engines. Uh, they have less thrust, obviously, and they weigh less, and they cost less. Um, well, I'll leave that to you guys to uh, tell me about. I think I need to tilt them out just a little bit. Let me make sure that's right. Uh, then I'm tucking them in like that so that they don't get in the way of things. I see fuel lines that are, well, they're clipped in. Well, I guess that's all right. So, yeah, I mean, obviously it's very efficient, it has a lot of delta-v, the goal of it is to be able to transfer to the moon, get into orbit, land, and then get back into orbit again. And then, we will use that tug that we have uh, to bring it back over. We could also use the tug to send it over there, but uh, it's instead of carrying the whole tug for something like this, it's easier to just uh, send this over there with its own fuel, which will be less actual liquid fuel consumption because it's not so heavy. 
Um, yeah, and then once it's back in orbit around Earth, it can be resupplied with uh, fertilizer and supplies, and then it'll, and of course fuel, and then it'll go off to the moon again. So that's the idea. All right, so that we won't have to launch the nuclear engines again. And our lander will also use nuclear engines, but not the NURBS. I could have, I didn't have to use these. I could have used um, the lackluster labs ones. I decided that these would look better on this. But for the lander, I used these NERVA Bastet uh, radial nuclear engines. They have a little bit more thrust than the NURBS, and they have gimbling. Uh, they cost more, and they weigh about the same. But uh, yeah, they, they have a scaling option actually. Lackluster Labs has its own uh, tweak scaling. You see it has one by one, two by two, but it also has this small option that I used for the lander. You'll see the lander in a bit. I think you'll like it. So, yep, that's the idea. Let's uh, get started uh, launching this to the moon and we'll immediately launch our, our Minmus crewed mission after it. But I want to test the system to make sure that it's all right so that if you know it's flippy or there's something wrong with the egg or something like that we don't have crew on board on our first test of it so there's supply master and let us uh, well let's change that around a bit and let's launch it's sort of a stubby little thing but hopefully it'll work all right throttle up SAS is on Am I forgetting anything? Obviously the reason we had the egg in the first place is so that the, fir uh, the first stage can come back down safely. If we try and bring it all the way to orbit, it doesn't have any heat shield or anything. So we can't really get it too far along the way, otherwise we'll lose it. Okay, here we go. It's a bit wobbly. I mean, Smart ASS is uh, overdoing the gimbling. I think the thud engine gimbling is too much for it. I'm gonna reserve a little bit of fuel in there. Okay, so let's open the doors. And note that the doors are automatically air brakes for the lower stage, so that's pretty handy. Separation. And off it goes. So yeah, it has convenient air brakes. Oh, see, I forgot to extend the pods. Let's extend the pods. We will deorbit the egg. Well, whenever you put these engines on infernal robotics parts, there tends to be a little bit of a roll. That's not a big problem right now. Now I didn't put any radiators on the supply delivery vehicle. We'll see if that's all right. Um, let's actually have some pointing up here. I'm pretty sure I disabled crossfeed. I did, right? Uh, yeah, it looks like all the tanks on the lander are fine. Oh, shoot. I went a little bit too far there. Hold on. I need to go retrograde now. I want to pull that. I want to make sure that the egg gets disposed of. Okay, back down you go. That should be pretty decisive. Okay, decouple. Prograde. Ignition. And bye bye. As you can see, 3,000 meters per second on this should be enough to get to the moon, land, and then get back into orbit again. Barring, you know, really silly failures on my part. Okay, let's get solar panels out, extend antennae, 
and I don't see any particular problems with this. Uh, it's more of a question of whether we're really delivering enough supplies at one go. We'll see about the fertilizer situation. As far as the first stage is concerned, we did recover it. Terminal, veloc terminal velocity of 6. Total refunds 25,600. Looks good. Alright, so this part is successful. Uh, maybe I should plot for the moon and then launch the other portion of the mission. I think uh, we can launch before this actually gets to its maneuver node. Alright, so then this now is the way that we will deliver three Kerbals to the surface of Minmus or to the moon should we want to do that. And as you can see, I've decided to use the Alcor pod, which I haven't used so far. It is a really complicated and delightful pod, though occasionally in previous versions of KSB I've had glitches with it. Hopefully it'll be alright here. Uh, we've got a little mop propellant tanks there, supplies for the trip, and uh, liquid fuel, which is currently locked, so we're not seeing the Delta V there. Uh, but you can assume the same sort of idea that we had with the supply lander. And uh, like I promised, the uh, nervous scaled to small there. And those are the radial nervous. And yeah, basically it's going to be a crew transfer vehicle. Eventually with the nervous, it'll be able to also come back to Earth. It might need help from the tug or a tug to uh, bring it back uh, to, I say Earth, Kerbin orbit. Uh, so and then it'll be resupplied and uh, recruited with more Kerbals and then it can go off and do more things. And it is uh, also, it has enough thrust to land on Duna if necessary, though it doesn't have parachutes right now, but those are easily added if we want to put it for use on that. And everything else is the same, egg is the same, and of course the launcher is the same. So we can proceed. The question is, who do we send? We need uh, two scientists and one engineer. And I guess, uh, well, we've got Randall there and Greg Bro. They don't have any experience. Let's pick up an engineer. Uh, Don Kerman or Melemony Kerman? Melemony is an interesting name. Oh, we've got max Kerbals already. Shoot, we're gonna have to upgrade the complex. Hmm. I want an engineer because that's uh, only an engineer can destroy that one part, the decoupler at the bottom of our base on Minmus. Well, we're gonna have to fire somebody? I don't think so. I don't want to fire anybody. Shouldn't have picked so many scientists. Scientists. Okay, let's see how much it's going to cost to upgrade the astronaut complex. Mm, 282,000, okay, well, that's just what we're going to have to do. And we will pick up Melemony Kerman, for now. And they are all assigned. Alright, so, everything seems to be okay. Okay, let's try this. Now the pod is only suitable for habitation for seven days, so we really can't have them uh, sit around in it for very long. You can see we've got the maneuver for the supply master there. Uh, just so you can see the interior of the Alcor pod and why it's so cool, uh, let me get rid of the rest of the UI. I mean, this is really sophisticated, podrific sort of stuff here. Right, I mean, here is raster prop monitor, graphs. I mean, this is really sophisticated, wonderful stuff. I think I've got uh, modifications to this from Jim Eliente on Twitch. I forget if uh, I've got those in here, possibly. Okay, but yeah, this is wonderful. And of course, oops. We can switch view to the other Kerbals. Three of them in here. There's another panel. Okay, well you get the idea. We've even got an exterior camera there for landing. If you want to do IBA stuff, this is the pod for you. But for now, we'll do it this way. 
Uh, come to think of it, none of them is a pilot. And I don't know if the Alcor pod has a remote controller. Did I put a remote controller somewhere on here? Maybe not. But then there's there would be no controller in here, on here. And yet there's SAS. So it must be alright, right? Because right? the the bomb stage doesn't have a controller and the egg doesn't have a controller. Alright, sounds reasonable. Okay, thrall up, SAS is on. And launch. <laughs> Besides, we have a main gem. Whoa! Not what I wanted to do. Thank goodness I didn't push EVA or something. This time I'll just use up the fuel on this stage. sort of like a bullet here. Let's just keep going for a bit. I don't want to open up the thing when it could cause humongous drag. Okay, now open doors. Okay, throw down. Separation. Okay, infinite robotic. No, 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 wrong one. This, That's the USI robotics one. There's an additional background sound, apparently. Not as far out as I'd like on this one. But they're also tilted out, so that's good. In an emergency, of course, the egg could also be used to serve as some sort of launch escape system for this. Okay, that's good enough. Double check we have all the fuel and it is locked anyway, so we should. Okay, um, let's point retrograde. That was actually a good idea last time to uh, point retrograde anyway, to let go of the egg. Okay, decouple. Unlock the fuel. Go prograde. And ignite the engine. Now these don't have the regular nuclear engine plume though. That's sad. But we are in orbit. Let's get the solar panels out. Everything seems to be working fine. I guess it must have a controller inside uh, the Alcor pod. I don't know. Cause, I mean, we don't have a pilot. That's what I'm thinking about here. Okie dokie. Everything seems to be fine. Let's plot for the moon with this and then uh, jump back to the supply mission. Well, actually, I said the moon, but I meant Minmus. This is going to Minmus, and it looks like it's actually going first. Uh, if it was going to the moon, it would probably be second, but uh, in this case, it so happens the location of Minmus ensures that this one has to do its burn first, so that's what we're going to do. And in this case, because we want them to get there in good time, instead of uh, hanging out waiting for... Uh, an encounter with a node. Remember, they can only stay in this vehicle for seven days. And we're uh, scratching the edge of that with that Mimis encounter right there. So, yeah. Uh, we had to get there quickly. We could not wait for a sending or descending node. And uh, so we'll have to do a mid course correction and uh, correct our inclination with Mimis. Okay, here we go. Okay, that's pretty close to what we wanted, and we have the mid-course adjustment, so we've got that timed there. 
and everything seems to be fine here so we leave this and turn to the supply master it looks like this one's burn is gonna take longer so I'll start now okay I think that item there must be a piece of this mission that we're going past I don't know we are in a pretty standard orbit I wonder when I get Kessler syndrome or something like that okay let's see let's get rid of that and yep uh, moon periapsis 60 kilometers sounds great let's add the SOI change and this one's on its way and it's got 2195 meters per second left so definitely enough to make orbit it should be like 260 land let's say a thousand and uh, take off again from the moon which is about 800 okay back to Podmaster for the mid-course adjustment by the way uh, our eggs bit the dust but we did recover that one stage so of course stage recovery was successful but two eggs were lost cracked whatever okay time warping okay that does a pretty good job on our inclination let's see about our approach um, that's still a pretty high periapsis uh, let's see if we can fix that okay that should do the trick 35 kilometers yeah that'll be fine okay so let's add that SOI change Seven, seven days and one hour. Hmm. Looks like a habitat for seven days, two hours, and 24 minutes. But the SOI change is seven days and one hour. Man, we're cutting it close here. Whew. Yeah. But, I mean, come on. How, how are we going to do stuff if our Alcor pod can't, can't deal with a standard transfer to Minmus? It's not even a particularly slow transfer to Minmus, I swear. I mean, we could go faster, but... Anyway, it's on its way. We'll see how it goes. At this point, I'd like to address two possibilities for our our situation on the moon where the reactor is not providing power to the base. Uh, there were two comments suggesting things, and... Uh, uh, one was this pro uh, microwave power transceiver. Somebody suggested that this is what we needed. Um, at, uh, what it has is a power coupler which receives power from power distribution units which is our reactor and it also has a power distributor which distributes power to nearby power couplers basically what this is is like a power mm, pylon something like that uh, which uh, can spread the influence of a particular reactor uh, it's not strictly necessary for our situation though because uh, the power uh, station, our power distribution unit, has one of those built in. So if we take a look here, it's got a power distributor and a power coupler, both of them built in here. And also our, our modules all have the power couplers, which receive power from the power distribution units. But if what we wanted to do was to uh, relay power further than the 2 kilometer range, of the of the reactor what we do is we put one of those uh, little uh, pylons I'll call them um, what are they called microwave power transceivers and we would put it like at the edge of the range of the reactor and then this microwave power transceiver would extend the reactors range for another two kilometers is what I think it's for so yeah that's that's the idea there but the other possibility uh, turned out to be correct so let's turn to our base so possibility number two was mentioned that uh, the reactor will only recharge our base if the electric charge is below 50 percent and you can see here i've uh, turned off our carb electric generator and we can see the 30 per second drain on the base right now but every time the electric charge gets significantly significantly below 50 percent not exactly 50 percent actually it's a little bit below it uh, the electric charge jumps up by about 200 units by about 10 percent so jump okay and then if we take a look at what's happening at our reactor still tilted on its side 
unfortunately. Uh, what we have is its electric charge is, well, it's under depletion. That's funny. Uh, last time I visited it, I had started the reactor, and now it's shut down again. Okay, uh, but let, let's sh uh, let's deactivate the reactor just so, well, when I re deactivate it, it went all the way up. But what we should see is that, yeah, see, uh, about a 200 unit chunk is taken out of its electric charge periodically. And sometime, there, there. So uh, that's the power being transmitted over to our base. I suppose they shut down the reactor unless they need it. The depleted fuel, I mean, it, it depletes fuel pretty quickly, it looks like. So this isn't going to last very long. We'll have to keep an eye on it. I'm going to start the reactor again. But does it actually shut down the reactor? Well, it isn't shutting down the reactor. Well, no, there, there we go. A core overheating shutdown. Oh. Oh. Hmm. So there's that problem. So apparently we don't have adequate radiation. I mean, you know, uh, heat dissipation from from this interesting well given that it's automatically shutting down because of that I think it'll be safer at our base to just keep running the carb electric unit since that'll be consistent anyway otherwise these guys might uh, lose all their power Right now they're okay on electric charge and can uh, periodically start the reactor in order to do that. Somebody had mentioned that uh, one possibility for the plutonium one, which uh, required 20 plutonium to start, is that you can only start it once. Obviously with this, uh, that is not a problem. So yeah, we can definitely start and shut down this. Maybe a benefit to having this. Uh, we do need to like send over a winch system to pull this upright. But considering, uh, I don't think that's going to help its heat situation. That's not the only thing we need to uh, deal with uh, deal with when it comes to this particular unit. So I'll have to think about that. But let's continue with our existing supply and crew transfer mission. All right, so we are in Mooner SOI with our supply mission. And it occurred to me that why don't we just, instead of getting into orbit first and then landing at the base, uh, just go for a straight trajectory since I have to make an inclination correction here anyway in order to uh, get into a polar sort of circumstance um, I've decided to plot this sort of trajectory uh, passing over it and then we'll pull it in once we get close now obviously it is pretty darn high it's not necessarily the most efficient thing uh, but it's quick uh, that's the plus side of it uh, you can't I mean, you can't always do it with uh, with an equatorial base, right? Because you're coming in like this and the base that you're trying to land at might be on this side at the time. But if you've got a polar base, you could do this uh, anytime, I think. Uh, uh, of course, you're going to have to do that inclination correction at the start anyway. So we are, or unless you've already done that, uh, figuring out once, uh, you know, on your ejection from the uh, Kerbin orbit. So you could do it there, or you could do it as a, as a mid-course plane change. It's harder to figure out uh, which side of the moon to be on. You could approach from either side, of course, but you have to figure out which side the base is going to be on when you get there. Okay, so we're going to do this correction. I don't have any pipe endpoints on here. I'm hoping that the normal resource sharing thing within 150 meters will operate properly. I should have put some pipe endpoints just for the heck of it. I should have added some KIS stuff, uh, like wrenches. Oh, right. Well, well, we're only trying to destroy that piece on Minmus. I should have added some wrenches to uh, the Alcor pod. Or not wrenches, drills. Something like that. Yeah, that would have been a good idea. I keep forgetting the KIS parts that I should send. Somebody mentioned that uh, the KIS parts disappear 
if you're in the if you put the Kerbal in the inflatable modules of the USI parts. So I'll have to keep an eye out for that. Okay, so now we're going to get close. It's gonna be a long time before our Alcor pod approaches Minmus, so we don't have to pay attention to that just yet. No, I, I actually want Mech Gems landing irons. Of course, it'd be even better if we did it all as a suicide burn. But I don't want to lose this thing. It took so much time making it and all. And it's got nuclear engines. Let's cut that surface horizontal speed. Not the vertical speed you see, just the horizontal speed. Okay, 3.5 kilometers now. Four minutes on the suicide burn countdown. Still going horizontally 200 meters per second. This is what it looks like as we approach. Let's have landing gear down. Seems like a good idea. We can't even see our base yet because we're not within 100 kilometers. Even though we're right over the crater. We're still at an altitude of 113 kilometers. Here we go, 40 seconds on the suicide burn countdown. It's still early, but you know, there's a limit to how much risk I'm willing to take here. I'm throttling down to allow the suicide burn countdown to sort of bleed off. We're maintaining a target difference of 1.2 kilometers right now. Okay, 10 seconds on the suicide burn countdown. Okay, let's go. I want a little bit of margin. Full thrust. Not actually sure which module I'm targeting. It looks like the reactor, actually. Make sure we're going to end up within 150 meters. I really want to have enough delta V to go back up again, thank you. Of course, we'll be lighter then without the supplies, but... Please don't be landing on anything. Uh-oh. This is a bad angle. Mm -mm -mm. I really don't want to be looking at this angle. Oh, 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 no. Why do I always do everything sideways? Okay, well, we are within range, right? Jeez. That was pretty bad. I think I could probably retract the landing gear. I hope I don't blow anything up, though. And upright this? Okay, good. Well. Ah, uh, reaction wheels. It's not like in realism overhaul. Okay. All better. So, now, at our base, we can use the fertilizer, right? So, we didn't have fertilizer before. It still says missing fertilizer. So is that module not within the maybe it uh, it does it doesn't have the 150 meter thing on it. Hmm. We could manually hook it up. So I guess these guys um how are the supplies? Yeah, I don't know if they're getting the supplies either. But they've got 64 days left, so Hmm. Wonder if they couldn't just, you know, carry fertilizer in their backpacks or something.
Well, I might have to use a pipe, pipe endpoint. Well, we need to send some KIS stuff over here. Anyway, system-wise, the thing works. Um, Logistics-wise, we uh, might have made a little mistake there. But at least, once we do get the... Wherever it is. Ooh, this is really overheating now. The reactor's off. Why is it overheating? Yeah, everything's overheating. You know, you don't have a reaction wheel, do you? you silly, silly, silly goose. Um, if I extend solar panel, will it help? Mm, toggle reactor. Start reactor. What to see if just starting the reactor helped. It doesn't. Core temperature is pretty high. Now it's going down. Core health is also going down. Georgie, you might have to do something about this, or we're gonna have to evacuate all of you. Well, you and Samrina to the base. I don't know if it's safe to keep this around here. Okay, well that's a thought. You guys are going to have to tell me what's going on here, maybe. Okay, but our supply vessel does not have overheating. And it can get back to orbit. It just needs uh, to give its supplies to things. Alright, let's take care of the crew headed for Mimis. Okay, well I brought our little uh, crew into Minmus sphere of influence and I just got the message that they all refuse to work. Randall, Greg Bro, and Melemony do not want to do any work. We've got no crew control here. Which is fine I guess. I don't know. Um okay maybe not fine. I can't turn this thing now. Hmm. I don't suppose I could get some emergency crew control. Tourist, tourist, tourist. Command state, tourist needs crew. So the controller on here only works with actual crew. And that means we probably can't make orbit, huh? Expired, expired. Is there a way to... Hmm... Okay, so we have a dilemma. Um, we can't... Let's see. Yeah, Mechjeb... Mechjeb almost tried to do something. But... It got stopped. See, it makes a minor motion. But it gets interrupted. Hmm... Status locked. And I can't enable RCS. Okay, so this is an emergency situation, folks. Um, yeah. I guess I will have to once again lean on the audience and ask, what should I do? Um, we need to make orbit around Minmus. If, if we don't make orbit around Minmus, we'll be tossed out into this trajectory here. So it's not like we're going to go on escape. That would be really horrible. So we could use some sort of vessel to uh, get to them and grab them and pull them in some sort of uh, remote controlled thing. We don't want to send another Kerbal. And then land them. We could dock it to the uh, top port and it will be a little small little device and then that will take control and make sure that they can land safely. We will probably need that anyway. Because this doesn't have a remote controller on it. Hmm. Yeah, I should have added some sort of probe core, huh? But anyway, in the situation right now, do we have to do the whole situation where we go into carbon orbit and have to grab this with something? Or is there a way to salvage the situation? such that when we get to Minmus periapsis we can make this burn and at least get them into Minmus orbit 
which uh, it'll be easier to get to them in that case. We could possibly even uh, send the probe core along with some additional supplies or some other module which will be a little bit more efficient than just sending a module to grab them in Kerbin orbit. So those are my questions and uh, I will wait for your responses. I guess this will be a short video because we didn't quite get them to where they're going and we're still waiting to uh, to actually have our fulfillment of the contract. All right, and on that note and with those questions, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.